Oulipo began as a French movement. In 1960, French writer and publisher Raymond Queneau hosted the first meeting at his home at Neuilly-sur-Seine, a chic suburb of Paris in France. François Le Lyonnais, an amateur French mathematician, was also implicated. These French men are considered the co-founders of Oulipo. The first Oulipian generation, including Noël Arnaud, Jacques Ben, Claude Berge, Jacques Duchateau, Lattice, Jean Lescure, Jean Queval, and Albert-Marie Schmitt, was entirely French. They examined the mathematical set theory of the sectarian and secret Bourbaki group to create an axiomatic approach to literature production. Oulipians divide their work into two branches regarding constraints, analytic and synthetic. Our Olympians pristinely proceed in a world indifferent to unknown authors, oblivious and obvious. Axioms will become novelties within novels praiseworthy, from obscurity to celebrity would rebound. Two authors representing nations, languages outside France, Calvino for the boot, America home to Matthews, would shine throughout the universe of readers, transcended by Gallic genius, draconian, dry and droll. Perec rising to glorify again, the hexagon. Cano, speaking of Oulipo in 1960, Somberly predicted, we create the religion and the schism. A question of primary importance surfaced as a debate between two well-known Oulipo authors. Should the constraint used in a work be published to help the reader understand? Must the content of potential literature allude to its constraint? French Oulipian Georges Perec's work performs, as it were, the constraint, without any explicit reference made. Nowhere in the twenty-eight chapters of his novel La Disparation is there the slightest mention that the text was entirely written without the letter. Even constraints Perrick used to compose short works were chastely dissimulated and dissolved into the content of the texts. The eleven short poems published in a 1972 collection entitled Ulceration ring with a strangely inhibited resonance. À toi, à nu, le scrutin, la rose crainte, locus où s'ancra, littéral ou inscrit, socle au naturel soin, cet temps sourcillant, ce soir urtical. Nous étions l'acre usure, la nicotine, l'art cousu, l'art né cosinus, l'art quoi, escale ou introite, le sur canular. Ton siècle tourne à si court la sincère action, l'usine à truc, l'outrance solitaire. Nul scolaire contu ne t'a souri, clairon, tu, sclérose, canu illusoire, cantate, sourcil noué, crin saltatoire. The words used seem caught in a web, taunting the reader with an annoying evasiveness. In fact, the structure of each poem, unifying the entire set, rotates in a different order, the eleven most used letters in the French Each poem is an anagrammatic variant of the title. Italian Ulipian, Italo Calvino, preferred that his constraints be plainly revealed to his readers. Unlike the cryptic Perec, the constraint scaffolding each of Calvino's works is offered in an annex or preface as an interpretive tool. The poetic novel Invisible Cities bears its structure in the table of contents. The book's chapters are completely subordinated to a draconian plan. Both the order of the tales and their theme is predetermined by a combinatorial plan rotating in an elegant mathematical style.
beginning of each section of the book, except the first, is determined by the end of one of these categories. If on a winter's night a traveller plainly talks the reader through the complex Ulipian process employed, lifting the veil offensively in chapter, the work presented this evening, for example, employs a set of constraints which the audience may or may not detect, a completely calculated durational structure. Literature, like mathematics, is based on propositions, not facts. For Ulipians, plots, forms, and even spelling are neutral elements whose finite recombinations should be exhausted regardless of logic or convention. Mathematical combinatoriality was pushed to extremes from the earliest Ulipo publications. Cano's Cent Mille Milliards de Poèmes presents an exponential sonnet. Ten ordered sets of fourteen freely interchangeable lines rigorously based on the same rhyme scheme. The resulting potential work would require over 190 million years to read in its entirety. <laughs>